Hi, I'm Chef Gail Sokol and welcome to my kitchen. Today we have a special treat. We are going to be doing a special recipe that uses up heirloom tomatoes because it's the end of the season and I am up to here in heirloom tomatoes. So I came up with this Napoleon thing with phyllo and brie and it's to die for. So I call it a Brie Napoleon with heirloom tomato, cherry tomato jam. I only made it with cherry tomatoes. And I'll show you how to make my jam, my jammy jam. But I'm going to get the phyllo in the oven first. So the first thing we're going to do, if you've never worked with phyllo, you're going to take it out of the box. It comes in the freezer section. You don't want to make your own phyllo. It's very difficult. I'll leave it to the professionals and you want to use one sheet at a time. So you put it, I usually put it on a sheet pan that's lined with wax paper and I take one sheet off. All right. And if it rips, it rips. That's okay. We can always cover it with another one. All right. And these are really 12 by 17 inches long. Okay. And then what you want to do is you're going to put little uh, like oil and butter. So I have a combination. I have a stick of unsalted butter and one third cup of olive oil. And I've mixed it together and I'm going to coat each piece with some olive oil butter. And then I'm going to make three layers. Okay, so three pieces of phyllo. But in between using the phyllo, you have to cover it. So I'm going to take a clean kitchen towel and I'm going to cover it because otherwise it will dry out. So I'm going to take some of my butter oil and I'm going to what I call Jackson Pollock it. So you know the, the painter, he used to have a cigarette in his mouth and just throw paint uh, at the um, beautiful canvas and sell them for like a million gazillion dollars. Don't we wish. All right, so here we go. One piece of uh, beautiful phyllo. And one good thing about phyllo, once you thaw it in your fridge, it's ready to go. And then if you don't finish it, you can actually refreeze it. It's amazing. So we're going to take another piece and you're going to do this very carefully. You don't want to do this when you're in a rush. And you're going to just take, if a little piece rips, don't worry, you're going to put it directly on top of the one below it. All right. Recover. Recover that. And then you're going to, you'll get the hang of it once you work with it. Uh, this is what baklava is made out of, uh, spanakopita, really a very versatile, uh, beautiful pastry. And sometimes I make little muffin cups with it. I actually have a video where I did make uh, like a cheese souffle in it with a salad for a cheese uh, or a salad course for the meal. Really, really nice. Okay, so one more. I'm going to do one more. And if you want them to be even flakier, you can do as many layers as you want. I'm choosing to do three because we're making Napoleons. So there's going to be three layers. All right. So I'm going to get this out of my way. And I have lined a parchment, uh, a, a sheet pan with parchment paper. And I've preheated my oven. Um, so I believe it's at 375 Fahrenheit, 375 degrees Fahrenheit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue to brush. And now I'm going to cut them into rectangles. You can make rectangles, you can make squares, whatever you want. But make sure you're brushing that butter oil mixture all the way to the end. Okay, so we have three pieces now. And I'm going to take my pizza wheel and... I say in my directions, and I'm reading them to you because I want you to make approximately four by three and a half inch square. So almost a four inch square. So I'm going to put my straight edge here, and I have four inches here. So I'm going to straight down. Um, this will feed between four and eight people, depending on how many of these triplet. Uh, layers you make. So another four inches right here. And then another here will take us to 12. Okay. 
I'm going to get that out of the way. See how easily it cuts? It's, it's really sort of a, a beautiful pastry to work with. And now on this side, I'm going to do three and a half. So we'll have our, I might not have done that so well, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, six and a half. Um, so we're going to do three and a half, so six and a half. And we're just going to go straight down. And then another four and a half. This brings us back to this. Okay. So I think I meant three and a half, but I, I cut it a little too big. That's okay. And these little pieces, you can just bake them off really, really nice because what you can do with them is uh, you can actually crush them up and put them over a salad. I'm going to put these rectangles just gently get, gather them and put them down on your parchment paper. And we're going to bake them at 375, and my oven is preheated. Uh, 375. Boy, that guy is really big. I did not measure him well. There we go. So I'm going to bake these off. I'm going to make a total of six now so I can build six of them for you. But since I happen to have these here, I will just move them over. All right. So you're going to bake these for about, I'd say, you know, that you want to get them crispy. So 375, uh, 10 to 12 minutes might take a little more. Every oven is a little different. So make sure you are going to get them as nice and crispy. Because uh, they do get crispy. They're, it's an amazing pastry. It really is. I, li I like working with it. Uh, and even if it's a little finicky, even if you're a little finicky, I like you. I like working with it. And if you have a little off piece, bake it off. All right, so I'm going to put this in my 375 degree oven until it gets nice and crispy. Like I said, it could be 10 minutes, it could be 12 minutes, um, but then take it out and let it cool. So while my phyllo crisps are in the oven, and they're going to take a little bit less time than I said, 10 minutes, put them in for between 5 and 8. Ovens, my oven's been going because I've been doing videos all day, and it can, they can run hot. So you really want them to get golden brown, but don't let them burn. So let me show you how I made my heirloom tomato jam. It's amazing. So I took 2 pounds of tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, all right? I mix them with two grated garlic cloves. I grated the garlic cloves. And then I put in one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, about three quarters to a teaspoon of kosher salt, mixed it all up, and then I put it on a cooling rack that I put on top of a sheet pan. All right, and I covered the sheet pan with aluminum foil just so cleanup wouldn't be so messy. And you want to separate the tomatoes out so they're single, single file and um, single layer. And you put them in the oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for about one hour. And they get all jammy and absolutely delicious. Um, and actually, the cherry tomatoes almost get like sugar. They're so sweet. With the garlic perfuming them and the oil. Mwah! So that's how I made my heirloom cherry tomato jam. So you can see my beautiful phyllo pastry crisps came out. They got very brown and beautiful. And now I've maintained my oven temperature at 375. And I'm using about 8 ounces, about half a pound of brie, any brie that you like. Um, and I have cut it. It comes in a round. And I've cut it in strips, like a quarter of an inch thick, a half an inch thick, whatever you like. And I'm putting a few pieces onto whatever, whichever way they fit, onto my phyllo crisps. I want to melt them. All right. And we're going to make a stack of three. So we're going to make one phyllo crisp with brie and tomatoes, another covered by another one with brie and tomatoes covered by a plain one. Yum. All right. If you got that in a restaurant as an appetizer, you'd be like, oh, yeah, we're coming back. 
So, and if they crunch and, and sort of break a little bit, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. All right, so we're just putting these back in the oven at 375 just until the brie melts. It may take a few minutes, may take up to five minutes. Just make sure nothing is browning or burning too much. We are ready to build our Napoleons. Our brie is melty and yummy. So I'm going to take one of my brie laden phyllos and put it on top. So this is how you're going to build this. You're going to take a few tomatoes from your jammy jam. And I've heated this up a little bit. So I've heated the tomatoes up. And you're just going to just build it. Use as much or as little as you want. And if some of the tomatoes squish, it's all good. It's all good. We're going to take another one. I'm going to put it on top. Oh, looks so pretty. We're going to keep building. What a great way to use late harvest cherry tomatoes. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning. And a few of the cherry tomatoes come off and fall. Who cares? Yum. And now I'm going to take the final touch is putting one of these on top. So there you have it. My heirloom cherry tomato Napoleons with brie. I hope you become a subscriber. I hope you enjoy these and I hope I see you next time.